So hi, I'm Janelle Shane, and I run an artificial intelligence humor blog at AIWeirdness.com. And I do all sorts of weird things. I'm going to show you some of the experiments I've done today uh, and that tell us interesting things about what AI is and what it definitely isn't. Uh, so let's start with uh, first experiment. So this is, you know, as Jeremy said, uh, AI is disrupting all kinds of industries. And so what about ice cream? Like, what if we used a powerful artificial intelligence to design new kinds of ice cream flavors? So I teamed up actually uh, with a group of middle school coders, and we set out to see what kind of new flavors we could get if we gave a list of existing ice cream flavors to a type of AI called an artificial neural network, had it imitate the names of the flavors, and uh, see what it comes up with as new flavors of the future. So uh, here's one of them, uh, pumpkin trash break. Uh, we have another one, peanut butter slime, strawberry cream disease. So um, the AI flavors are not as delicious as we might have hoped. So, you know, is it tr trying to kill us or is it trying to do what we wanted and it just made a mistake? So uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about today. Like, no matter if we are using AI, thinking about using AI, or just interacting with all of these increasing number of products and services that use AI, uh, we can learn a lot of the from the times when AI goes wrong. So in movies, when AI goes wrong, uh, it's because AI has decided that what is wa it wants is not necessarily what the humans want. So it's smart enough to think at least as intelligently as a human, observe the world, come up with its own goals, its own desires. And so this is what we call a general artificial intelligence. Like it can think at least as well as a human. So today's AI is not nearly smart enough for that. Uh, it doesn't have its own goals and desires. It has the approximate computing power of an earthworm or maybe a single honeybee. And it can do, still do a really great job on a really narrow task. In fact, the narrower the task, the smarter the AI seems. So that's why uh, we're calling it artificial narrow intelligence or narrow artificial intelligence. And so these are the kinds of things that you'll actually be using or interacting with. Uh, this is what we have today, the things that are uh, recommending videos or scanning transactions for fraud, looking at medical images, that sort of thing. And working with narrow AI is nothing like working with a human. So when you're working with AI, you have to think a bit differently. So let's say, for example, uh, you want to design, you want an AI to design a robot that can walk from point A to point B. And so you give it a bunch of robot parts and you wanted to come up with a way designed to put those robot parts together into a body design and then walk that body from point A to point B. And uh, so what you'd expect it to do with these body parts and what a human would do seeing this list of parts is to assemble it into a robot shaped robot with legs and tell it to walk with those legs from point A to point B. And if you were to write a computer program yourself with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this, like this is also what you would tell it to do, you know, make a robot, walk point A to point B. Uh, but here's what's different about AI. Uh, when you ask AI to solve a problem, you don't tell it exactly how to do it. Like it has to, you give it the goal and it has to figure out its own strategy on how to reach that goal. And we call, and come up with that strategy via trial and error. And we call this kind of approach uh, machine learning. And this is pretty much uh, what we are calling, when someone says AI today, that's mostly what they mean, machine learning. And then under the umbrella of machine learning are things like uh, artificial neural networks or deep learning, reinforcement learning, that kind of thing, all under the umbrella of narrow artificial intelligence. And so uh, when it turns out that when researchers have asked uh, AI to solve this problem of assemble a robot from these parts and travel from point A to point B, this is what it tends to do time and time again. Assemble the robot into a tall tower and just fall over. So 
we, you know, we thought we were, this is a disconnect here. So we thought we were asking it to walk, but what we were really asking it to do was just get to point B. And technically it did exactly what we asked for. So AI does what we asked for, it doesn't understand what we want. And I'm not kidding about this, I'll show you an example. So this is a solution of a couple of walking robots. AI came up with the design for the legs, came up with the way of moving those legs to walk across this landscape. And the legs are kind of weird, but uh, at least it's walking. But this is not the solution that the AI came up with when it could do anything it, it wanted. When uh, you remove all restrictions on like what size the legs can be and things like that, this is what you get instead. Yeah. <laughs> so technically, this gave them what they asked for. Uh, and the trick with working with AI is to set up the problem so that it actually does what we want. And even getting AI to do something like walk is really, really hard.